Margarita Bertola Frey, F R E Y, and uh, I am from Torino, Italy, the most beautiful city in Italy. That's where I went to school. Oh, the the house in the side there. That's the house of uh, my mother, and uh, in the horse and the carriage is my grandfather, and they had a big store. So the, my grandmother is in the and the, uh, in the door of the store opening up and they was producing in Italy uh, sausage and salami and they used to export all their product all through Italy. So um, can you, we'll just jump right into it because a lot of these kids are from, from Italy. Can you tell us about your childhood being from Turin and what yes, that was uh, like growing up? I was uh, I went to school all through um, my young time with uh, Mussolini, and uh, I was uh, very active in uh, at athletic uh, um, and gymnastic and uh, art, and uh, everything was wonderful. They teach the children uh, how to have respect for the family, to be nice, love and no hostility. So we really grew up to be good until I remember about when I was nine years old, 10 years old, then my father, he was not for the fascist, he was against it. So he got in a little bit of trouble and he built a big house and he lost everything because uh, he was not with Mussolini. So can you tell us a little bit about these photos here, about your background and what year oh, you were born? Oh, okay. The picture on the left is when I born. Um, it's a long story to tell about the way I born because when I born, my sister died. So we, my mother had some problems. So she had to give me away uh, to a nurse. Uh, so I didn't have my mother when I just born. Uh, then uh, the other picture is the picture of my beautiful city of Torino with the, uh, with the Mole Antonelliana, where that's the point where they made the first movie. The first movie was made in that building. Um, everything else, it's... Uh, uh, is that a painting? I don't see that. We'll we'll get to your paintings in a second. Um, oh, the a, next, yeah. the okay. next photos we have is when you were younger. Yeah, that's when I was about five years old in a garden. My mother called me Margarita because Margarita in Italian, it's a daisy. So she put me in a garden with a daisy and took my picture. The next one is me posing with my doll uh, that was just before the war. And the second one, the third one is when I... Uh, was going up in the mountains in the Alps um, with my mother. So um, we are getting into uh, close. Oh, and then uh, here, um, this is is uh, this that's for my the communion, yep. the communion, uh, Catholic communion. You know, my mother dressed me up really beautiful. Yeah. So um, historically, can you tell us uh, some of the kids here because they're learning about World War II? What was it like? when fascism began in Europe, when in Northern Italy, where you were at, when the Nazis came and occupied? Well, the Nazi came and occupied all Italy. And then they made their way up to Italy. We end up in Torino with 30,000 German. 
and uh, they were into getting into the Fiat when they made the cars, where they made the car, and trying to have them uh, supply them with uh, tanks and uh, uh, things for uh, the war. And uh, that's when uh, that's when the partisan the partisan was formed in 1942-43, and uh, we all got together to fight the German. It was very incredible because we had too many. And the American, they were coming up from Sicily, and they got to, uh, they got at least into um, Florence, something like that. And all the partisans, they were riding in the mountains, in the Alps. And as soon as the, all the German came north, all the all the partisans came down from the mountains, and all the one that we had in uh, in the city of Torino, uh, we had to try to have them surrendered. So we had a terrible fight. Uh, the German finally have to climb up and try to cross over to Germany, but we stopped them. And uh, they surrendered, finally surrendered. So that was just about the end of the war in Torino. Uh, and remember. can you tell the tell the kids about how old were you when that happened? When when that happened, uh, uh, the liberation of the North, it was just about uh, 45, 1945, at the end of it, of 1945. That's when the end, we end up the war completely in Italy. There was no more war. And you were, you were just a teenager, right? I was a teenager. I was 17, yes. And my job was to bring the pistol, ammunition, anything they give me. I have to, with my bicycle, I go pick up the material. And then I cross the city and uh, trying to ignore the German because they were always looking for young kids like me doing stuff like that and so i was very clever i i got to know all the little side roads and i hide in bushes and i did all kind of thing anyway i don't know how i'm here today because i lost 95 girlfriend of mine they die the german killed them and then they hang them in the street and um, i am just so lucky that every day i say thanks for being alive uh, and the memory, it's horrible because I see so many people, so many little boys being killed because they were partisan and the fascists just put them against the wall and just killed them. And they made me sit there and watch it. They wanted me to witness the killing to make me so scared. Sometimes they let me go. And then after I leave and my bicycle, I run. They keep stealing, sh shooting against me. And I don't know, I missed every bullet. I was just a lucky, lucky, lucky person in my in my whole life. Uh, to be able to be here and still talking to you, it's a miracle. Uh, it Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. And I know that you cover a lot of that in your book, Marissa's Courage, which is a wonderful read. It's a great yeah. book, very well written. Um, Ten, can you talk a little bit to the kids about where that courage came from at such a scary time as a teenage girl going through this and having soldiers shooting at you? And essentially, you were a spy for the Italian resistance. You're a freedom fighter. Where did that yes. courage come from? Well, it came from all the suffering that my family did and kind of the fascist. Uh, my father was incredibly upset over uh, he used to sit on the table with a blanket over his head, listening to Fiorello La Guardia in New York. And we all got so incredibly against everything that was going on. It was something incredible. It's just almost impossible for people to survive just the agony of being going through something like that. And so uh, Right yeah. here, we have, we have, can you explain to the kids what this, um, what this identification card, the significance of this is? Oh, that's a, that's a picture they took in, for me in Via Roma, 
in Torino, I was walking and I was wearing the dress that I designed. I made the dress so somebody took a picture of me with my dress on it. And uh, I used to walk there with my books. And inside of my books, I used to carry uh, very secret, uh, secret uh, notice from the for the partisan and they never I never I almost got cut one time when the fascist they stopped me and they wanted to know what was in my book but I survived that one too uh, absolutely. absolutely and we'll move along I know that I've been getting a lot of emailed questions from the students and we're going to get to those questions in a second yeah. but um can you talk to us a little bit about being part of the uh, Garibaldi Bur Brigade, which is a very famous Italian uh, resistance organization during World War II. Yeah, Garibaldi was a hero in Italy. And so we give the name to the partisan, the Garibaldi Brigade. I was one of the first one that joined. Uh, we had a friend who was the, uh, he was uh, the, uh, the leader of the Garibaldi Brigade. And uh, so we formed groups. Uh, men and women, the men, lots of them, they went up in the mountains in the Alps and uh, they just sit there. They had no food, nothing, but they just waited for the time that come to come down to help us out to get rid of the chairman. And so um, it was men and women working like that, you know, but always hiding, you know, in the bushes, everywhere that we could find rest, somewhere to hide from them. And uh, then when we hear the we trucks, you know, of the German coming in, then we really had to run. <laughs> I fell off the bike many times. It's um, the story that you, the stories that you have in your in your uh, biography are just some of them are absolutely unbelievable that you survived it. Um, so can you talk about we, we talk a little bit about leading up to the war, about the war, and then can you talk to us a little bit about the point of liberation, when Italy was liberated against the fascists? Yeah, it was liberated. So the day after it was liberated, that's me and the, um, a military from the aviation friend of mine with his wife, and everybody got out of the houses, everybody singing. And we were walking here on the Valentino Park in Torino. Everybody was celebrating. It was something incredible because you, you believe me, four years of that agony, it was horrible. It was a day that it was no way to explain uh, the happiness that was around the whole city. And uh, it, it is just incredible that was finished, you know. To me, it looks like it's not finished yet because I still remember. <laughs> but it, uh, it it was everybody got together to celebrate. I can't imagine. And can you describe some of those feelings as like a teenage girl and you helped liberate your own home country and being a part of that? What did that feel like? Oh, it feels incredible because, you know, after that, after the war finished, I, I helped An office and I help uh, uh, packing all the food for the family of the partisan that die. And uh, so I worked there and uh, to, um, to prepare to give them the food. And um, I invented a couple of things, the way they put sugar and stuff in the paper because there was no bags, no nothing. And we had to feed all those people. So I did that until until the the, the office closed, uh, and uh, I did it for about six months, I think. And I was very proud of to being able to help, you know. And, and uh, thank you for for your service, not just uh, to your country, but to our country in America. And thank you for your service for helping liberate uh, Europe through such a tumultuous time. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, obviously your book addresses your schooling and, and your parents. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's my mother, but that's not my father. Is the second husband. He's, my mother came to America and uh, my father died. So she came 
here to visit me and she and met this man and she got remarried. And uh, the building on the side, it's uh, the building, uh, it's uh, the play, oh, is it the building? Yeah, it's a building where I used to, I used to sing in an orchestra and that's where I met my husband. Absolutely. And you address a lot of that in, in the book. But one thing that's yeah. really cool about Margarita, a fact about her is she was an actress. She was a singer and she's currently a pretty phenomenal painter. So we'll we'll show some of that in a second. Yeah. Yeah, um, so you address this in your book about your marriage uh, with your husband, who was an American soldier. Um, and that was just a, a common tale. Um, and so that's why you came to the United States was because you married an American soldier? Yeah, he was there when I was singing and he saw me, he was with a, with a jeep and with his, uh, his friend. And uh, so uh, he told me, when he saw me, he said, I'm coming back to marry you. But I didn't even know what the devil he was talking about. Anyway, it happened because he did come back to marry me. And uh, it, it it's a very peculiar situation that I was in because my mother wanted me to be something and she wanted me to come to America. So my mother said to me, you just get married and that's it, it's time, you know, I'm 19. And uh, so I did whatever she told me. So I, I got married and I came to America. And uh, I'm still here. Yeah, you are. And um, you've accomplished a lot of things, even a business owner in America. You've done a lot of stuff. You have a very interesting story. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and I know we're just touching on it, but uh, can you talk about the process when you're immigrating to America, going across the Atlantic? And, oh, yes. Um, yes. I, I got across and then I got to New York and I went to the, under the Statue of Liberty and then I was not feeling good, so I ended up in uh, Ellis Island, where they stop everybody that's not feeling too good. They don't let them come to America. So I got there, and then I finally disembarked in New York, which that was uh, exciting to me because when the boat turned around in the morning, I found myself under all this incredible building. It was just like I wasn't alive. I was dreaming. It's a very beautiful story in, in the book that you're talking about that. And speaking of beautiful, we got some photos of you when you were uh, going into acting um, yeah. from a while ago. And yes. you want to talk a little bit about this? Oh, this is when I just, uh, one one is just me when I was going to school. The other one is the one where I was preparing to be into a movie, but I never made it because my mother don't agree with it. Uh, you know, in Italy, we listen to the family. and. You know, Mussolini teach respect, respect the family. You know, you do not go against what the family tell you to do. Well, you know, it's wonderful to do that. But sometimes you better learn or do some of your decision when you're young, you know, a little bit. Sure, sure. And uh, we have a couple more photos. And can you tell us a little bit about the being recognized from the Italian government for your sacrifices? Oh, I, I can't see this picture. What is that? Um, it was from the consulate, uh, the Italian consulate in Phoenix, Arizona, um, uh, regarding oh. your services. Oh, yes, yes. They, they gave me a, a, a button. I got it in my shirt now. See if you can see it. Uh, yep. it I'm, a, I'm Italian citizen and I'm an American um, resident permanent. And um, so... Uh, they like me for that because I'm Italian and uh, I am so proud of being in America. Um, and that the, uh, that's the counselor. Yeah, she, she, I went to speak to the people in the, in a fair in, uh, in Phoenix. Absolutely. And uh, our final picture is some of your artwork you had shared earlier with the black and white painting that you painted in 1946, I believe it is. Uh, the one uh, the one with the chapel is the yeah. one I painted in 1946 and I still have it. And I brought it with me back to Italy 
four times. Every time I went to Italy, I take the picture with me. I painted it in a piece of board. Uh, it was a wood board. And uh, my father gave me that piece to do a painting. And it happened that I went to Como, the Lake of Como, and I painted this lady that she was in the chapel. During uh, going around the chapel, going around the lake in Como, they have a lot of those little tiny uh, chapel that you can stop and visit God while you're walking. And so that's that's what I did. I uh, I made a painting there, and I still have it. Sure. Do you mind if we go now jump right into some student questions? Is that okay? Oh, that's fine. Yes. Oh. Okay. We're going to let Eleonora, uh, she had a really good question. You can unmute Eleonora to ask your question. Yes. Eleonora, ask so, your question. Yeah. So I wrote uh, about uh, another partisan, uh, partisan fighter. Uh, she, I wanted to ask if you met her. Uh, she is uh, Paola Del Din from the Osopo Brigade. Do you, did you hear that question? Um, no, I didn't hear clear the she, question. Oh, she wanted to know if you knew a diff, another partisan fighter named Paola Del Din. No, Paola nope. Del Din. Okay. I know there's some hi historical significance there because I, I yeah, just searched yeah. on Oh, somebody, she wants to know if I knew that person. Yeah. Okay, no, no. I don't, even if I knew her, I would not remember. I got a lot of books with all the name of the people who was, who was with me, you know, but I don't remember names like that, no. You're fine, no, that's good. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have Elena. Elena, you had a very good question. You can unmute uh, and ask whenever you want. Okay, I wanted to ask you, how was it like to leave your country at such a young age? It was very, very hard because, uh, you know, I, um, I didn't speak the, uh, English. Uh, I, I went to school for English for four years, but I did speaking it is different. So uh, when I got to America, it was incredibly hard for me not to be able to express myself. You know, I made a lot of mistakes. I I have lots of jokes to tell of the thing that I did that I was not supposed to because I didn't understand what was going around me. And my husband didn't even speak really good Italian. She just kind of tell me what to do and things with the more, most of all with the motion of the hand and everything. But I was not be able to really absorb everything they tell me. I, it was very, very hard, but I got adjusted because I paint and my husband supply me with all the art supply for painting. And I went crazy. I just, my loneliness that I, that I fear, it was that I put it all in my art and I paint the restaurant, my husband owned a restaurant. So I paint the walls in the restaurant. I paint the floor outside of the restaurant. I paint everything I can get a hold of it. So that makes me keep it up. And I, that's what made me keep going until I, my, I don't learn how to speak English until my husband really, he passed away, he died. And then I really have to start to learn English to be able to protect my children and to make a life for myself. And you speak phenomenal English, by the way. You speak Thank great you. English. <laughs> so we have yeah. Eleanor. Eleanor, uh, you had a very good question. Go ahead and ask, friend. Um, hello, so I had one question. Where did you find the strength and the courage to fight for your country? Like you were so young, you know. Yeah, well, I was so young, but we didn't do anything at that age, nothing else but talking about the war, uh, what was going to go happening to us. Uh, we had not much hope. We didn't have no desire to do anything that was fun. It was just a problem, probably just like they do it in Russia now, you know, what the kids do. You know, they hear nothing but disaster. 
So that gave me the courage to um, get in with my friends and to my commander that was a friend of the family uh, to say, this is it, this is enough. We have to stop this. We have to try to get back to normal. Like when you were very young, uh, we try so hard. And then uh, finally, finally we formed the partisan. And um, I remember when they gave me my paper, I was so excited to be a partisan, uh, to be able to do something for Italy and to make these people stop. You know, like the way I would like to find a way to stop the Russian for fighting, because that is destruction of humanity. You know, you don't have the right to kill people. Nobody has a right to kill anybody. We were born to survive. That's my, my project was to change things. I did not change much, but I still try to suggest that we all have to try to make these people change their mind. So I was very proud of helping. I was so excited. I used to cry, you know, when we were go out in uh, some action that we did and we lost our partisan. But uh, I was so proud for what we were doing. We will always believe that we were going to put a stop to it, you know. And finally, Italy got liberated. They certainly did. And um, we have a few more student questions and then we'll let you go because some of these kids are, are here and it's very late where they're at in the world. Um, yeah. This is Sophia. And Sophia, you had a lovely question for Margarita. Ciao. Uh, I wanted to ask if you miss uh, Italy. Yes, I do miss Italy. Uh, but uh, I am a person that gets adjusted. You know, I don't miss enough to hurt myself. I really wish sometime that I would stay in Italy and I don't know what my life would have been if I would run it. Uh, whatever I, I done here, it was pretty tragic. I had a lot of problem. And uh, up to now, I am not sorry about what I did. And uh, I still would really like to be strong enough to go one more time to Italy. Um, but you know, being that I'm comfortable and uh, I have a lot of friends here, lots of Italian friends, a lot of people who pay attention to me. And uh, so I am strong enough to be able to accept everything because, you know, life is not easy anyway. Anything you try, everything looks bare on the other side of the fence, but it's not that way. You have to think of what you have, try not to lose it. That is phenomenal advice. And um, so we'll go with two more questions. This is Bianca. Bianca, you had a very nice question. Go ahead and ask our guest. Yes, hello. First of all, thank you so much for sharing with us your experience. And I wanted to ask um, in general, like what do you think about the modern world? So from also younger generations point of view, how do you think, uh, since it's so different from the one you obviously grew up in, like if you have any anything in general to say? Uh, <clears throat> well, I think about the modern generation, uh, the kids, uh, they're not. Uh, I don't. I don't think they should be talk too much about war and everything, but it's happening again. So uh, their youth is, is probably more like when I was doing what I was doing at 17, because uh, they, they see and they hear too much about um, being people frustrated, hungry, uh, they having, uh, um, I think they, they're, they should not have to go through this. They should have a little bit of uh, uh, relaxation, thinking about the war being different, being nice, being, you know, when you hear all this thing that's happening, it sure is not comfortable. You know, it's, uh, it makes you upset. But we have to learn how to put up with it. 
they have to learn to know that there are people that they can steer a lot of problem. And it's not everybody. Everybody wants to be peaceful, lovable, having a family and everything. But then it's always one person, you know, like it happened in Russia now, you know, these poor people, they, they're going through what I went through during the World War II. And it, how can kids uh, be happy when they hear all this uh, turmoil that's happening in our life? You know, the world is a beautiful place to be, but they're ruined it by uh, talking about the worst thing that's happening in this world. This world, it's wonderful. You know, look at the tree and look at the beautiful thing that we have around. But we are too much against the beauty. We hear too much about disaster and people get unhappy. Uh, we should not do that. We should change it and uh, think more about the people than they're peaceful, not people who want war. We don't need the war. I went through one, and I tell you, I feel so sorry for the people that they're going through now. What are they going through? I feel it just like it happened again. So we have to all work together and make a demonstration, make more demonstration against the war. We don't need a war. They can find a way to uh, come to a conclusion to help each other, the nation, and not strike a war because of the mentality that a person has. We all different. Mm -hmm. We all have to try to come to a conclusion, but not killing universe. No, is the destruction really of the humanity to watch all these people die? Nobody's supposed to die like that, you know. And for our um, and thank you for all that advice. And you kind of touched on a little bit uh, this already, but Cornuat, um, a student named Cornuat has uh, our final student question. You should be able to unmute uh, to ask. Go ahead. So uh, my question is, uh, what is your message to the future generations? The future generation, um, well, it's not up to me to tell people what they're gonna be, but um, the future should be uh, changing their mind about hostility, madness, um, revenge, all the things that hurt. I think the new generation should try to go toward teaching peace, teaching that Everything that they do by killing people, they can do it by surviving, by getting together friendship, nation with nation, and the kid should be able to see a better world by doing that and talk against the war. Don't, don't, there is nobody who wants a war. I don't think so. There is only a couple of people like Mussolini and uh, Hitler. And now we have Putin then. Uh, it, it's something incredible. It's only the vision of one person that wants their way. It's a vision that they wanted to have what they want. But they destroy people. They die, the people, children. I cannot sleep at night thinking about what's going on in the war because I saw it, because I felt it. Well, you, you uh, really shared your story with us today. It was very important for you to share this story. Uh, I have it in the link for our guest book. Uh, it's Marissa's Courage, the Memoirs of a Survivor of the Italian Resistance. Before we go, we have a student who would like to thank you in your native language. Sophie, go ahead and you can thank Ms. Frey. Yes. Yes. Oh, she, uh, she's... <laughs> think well, I said... Buonasera, la, la volevo ringraziare in italiano per aver condiviso la sua storia. È stato molto interessante e abbiamo imparato molte cose nuove, quindi la ringrazio. Grazie.
from all of the other students around the world. Before I end this meeting for all, I'm gonna allow everyone to unmute. Can we all together, can we say thank you to our guests for taking thank the time? You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.